Thank you so much for joining us. I know we have some uh, heavy hitters down on the second floor, so thank you for making the time for our bridge partnership session. My name is Cassidy Fitzpatrick. I'm the vice president for musician advancement at the New World Symphony. Um, and what that means <laughs> is that I oversee all of the fellows' activities um, outside of the orchestral space. So the community engagement initiati initiatives, our leadership and entrepreneurship development, um, diversity, equity, inclusion initiatives, and culture setting, uh, and you know, just kind of assessing the field and seeing what we think the fellows need to be the best 21st century musicians that they can be. So never a dull moment. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with New World, we are a postgraduate fellowship program for classical orchestral musicians. Um, so we have 87 fellows each year who come to us from the top universities' conservatories uh, in the US, but also around the world. Um, and we are an accredited educational institution. So we are not degree granting, but we do have official curriculum and abide by accreditation standards. So it's an interesting model. Um, and today, I'm joined by some of my wonderful colleagues who participate in a community engagement program we have called NWS Connect. And we're going to talk a little bit about how we have developed this collaboration, um, what it's meant to us and our organizations, our students, our fellows. Um, and hopefully, it will serve as a model and possibly inspiration for something that you might want to do um, in your city or at your organization. So Walter, could you introduce yourself, please? Yes, my name is Walter Bittner, and I'm the Director of Education and Community Engagement for the Nashville Symphony. And um, I'm here specifically today to talk about one of our programs in our education department at the Nashville Symphony called the Cello Rondo, which is a pre-college pipeline program for um, students from underrepresented ethnicities who seek to become professional classical musicians. Uh, we started our program, uh, we accepted our first students into the program two and a half years ago. We're in our third year and uh, we now have 16 students. We're in the process of growing it to a full enrollment of 24 students and um, we'll graduate our first student this year and um, I've been very thrilled for the last several years to get to know these two women here on my right, these two amazing people that have really helped us grow a stellar program in Nashville. Thanks, Walter. I'm Adrienne Thompson, and I manage the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra's talent development program. This is a program that initially started, we've been around for 25 years, it initially started as a civil rights initiative. The orchestra was concerned about um, the lack of diversification in the audience and the lack of students of color that were participating in the Atlanta Symphony um, uh, Youth Orchestra. And so this program began by giving lessons and that's what they hoped would happen, that more people would get into ASYO and that by giving complimentary tickets to the family that there would be some diversity in the audience. The program, as students participated, it started out with 10 students. We now serve 25. And what it involved to is a program that now our mission is to get students into the best conservatories and university schools of music that we can so that they are on the pathway to keep the options open to have a career as a professional performing classical musician. And uh, I've been running the program for uh, four years and I just wanted to give you an idea of where our students have gone. We've had 14 graduates in that four year period and Two have gone to Manhattan School of Music, two have gone to Cleveland Institute of Music, two have gone to Indiana, one to Curtis, one to Juilliard, one to Peabody, one to Berkeley, one to Columbus State, one to Royal College of Music in London, uh, the University of Southern California, and Rice. And for our class, we have five students graduating in 2019, and one of them uh, auditioned and on January 14th for Indiana, and while I was here, I got a text from her saying that she had been accepted. Thank you, Adrian. <laughs> so I'm gonna explain to you a little bit about what NWS Connect is as a program um, and the origins of it. So this started as a kernel of an idea from our artistic director and co-founder, Michael Tilson Thomas, MTT. I will probably just call him MTT for the rest of this presentation. <laughs> um, he had an idea that we could build what he calls a quote hotline 
uh, for middle and high school musicians where they could have access to um, top classical musicians and ask them questions, and especially for those young instrumentalists who might not have access to a professional symphony or to a professional level teacher. Um, and so this kernel of an idea turned into NWS Connect uh, with help in large part from the Rockefeller Foundation who gave us a four-year grant, um, which is now over, but uh, at the time to, to put this together. So I was kind of handed this kernel of an idea and then a little bit of money <laughs> from the Rockefeller Foundation and told to go forth and create community. Um, so there's been a lot of learning along the way. I was fortunate uh, as part of the grant we had budgeted for an outside evaluator um, and the work that they helped me do was incredible and has helped us make tweaks to the program that has really, I think, accelerated the growth and impact of it in a very short amount of time. So I wanted to read a description that actually one of the evaluators wrote about NWS Connect because I think it, it says what it is very clearly. New World NWS Connect is a multi-dimensional program of the New World Symphony that lever leverages social media technologies, technology resources unique to the New World Symphony, and the talents of its fellows to create exper experiential and distance learning opportunities for talented middle and high school students. Connect extends to serve young musicians from communities underrepresented in classical music through multifaceted partnerships with the Atlanta Symphony Talent Development Program, the National Symphony's Echella Rondo Program, and others. Connect engages with these programs through both on-site visits and distance learning using Internet 2 technology. We're going to talk about all these things, but first I want to show you a video so you have a little bit of a, visu a visual about what we're talking about. And I've seen some very high-level <laughs> videos this week, and this was just cobbled together from archival footage, so I'm sorry. <laughs> awesome. So, um, so what grade are you in? Um, I'm in 10th grade. 10th grade. Okay. And you have Syrinx and a Karg Ehlert etude, is that correct? Um, I actually changed mine from, well, I played that last time, but oh. now I'm learning the, the Polish one. Oh, perfect. Sounds great. Yeah. So what you are seeing on the left side of the screen is a room in New World Center in Miami Beach, and on the right side, a classroom at Vanderbilt in Nashville. notice is that you have a ton of energy when you play and whatever you do never ever lose that that is so important and that is going to stand out and it'll change like as you get you know as you grow as a musician and you know you change as a person you know you're that that will become more refined and but you'll always have that so never suppress that energy in um an expensive like technique or something like that so I love that uh, Alia, yes. so, uh, will, will you tell us all a little bit more about yourself, uh, how long have you been studying and all that kind of thing? Okay. Um, I've been playing flute for about five years mm -hmm. and I've just recently been accepted into the Achelarondo program so I've been studying with Leslie Fagan for about six months now. Great. And on this specific piece I've uh, worked on it for about two months. Mm -hmm. And are you? Are there other people in your family who are musicians? Uh, no. So, <laughs> is is it a surprise to them that you are be such a serious musician? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do you get to practice at home? Does anybody yell at you if you're practicing too long? No. <laughs> I, I get around it. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. Oh, his family is sitting Well, we've all her. gone through that. Good for you for having the persistence to make it happen. Great. I, I really look forward to hearing you play something. <laughs> I think you could bring more of this beautiful, uh, sensuous quality that you have to your low playing in some of the ways you play the phrases in the higher register. I was talking about stories. This is so amazing. Ali, will you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Alia Hanif. What's I'm your last name? Alia Hanif. Thank you. I'm a senior in high school in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. 
And I'll be playing Syrinx by WC. And Ali is somebody that we Ali is someone we discovered in uh, one of our uh, program side by side programs. We discovered her on online at first, didn't we? Uh, in Nashville, and she's come down and played with us, and we love hearing her play. And this is uh, she's had some coaching from time to time with members of our section. So the screens that you can see on either side of her are actually re remote locations. So those are people who are joining this uh, masterclass with us from different cities um, and watching. We're able to create essentially a room online where we can all participate in this masterclass together. Um, so the, the construct, and especially with the partnership with these two, is uh, we do a series of um, internet lessons or internet masterclasses or sometimes even just conversations with the students of these programs leading up to a culminating event called the Town Hall Masterclass where we select one student or a chamber ensemble to perform for MTT and to receive feedback from him. Um, we also do a Facebook live stream of the Town Hall Masterclass so that people can watch online, they can ask their questions. Um, and it's been really exciting for us to see how engaged MTT has been with it uh, just because you know, it's always a little bit of a gamble when you have your artistic director involved in things, but um, he's, he's enjoyed it so much that we've been able to put a lot of resources behind it and make it into a, a really spectacular program. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about how this all came to be um, in hopes that, that there are some toolkit things that you can take away uh, to your own organizations. So first, Walter, um, can you tell the story of how we, we became partners in this endeavor? I'd love to. Um, so we started the, Na the Cello Rondo uh, program at the Nashville Symphony in uh, 2015 was when we started designing the program and, and putting it together, researching how we would do it. Um, luckily, Nashville is close to at Atlanta, and, and I traveled down and met Adrian and learned about the talent development program, and we were very fortunate to receive a grant from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation at the end of 2015 and launched the program in 2016. And um, I was invited to speak about it at the uh, League of American Orchestras conference in 2016 or 17. I can't remember now. 16. 16. And when I, so I, I, um, I was on a panel with Stanford Thompson, who I'm sure that all of you have seen in ses other sessions here this weekend, and um, Peter Landgren, who was then at the um, Cincinnati Conservatory each talking about different stages of the pre-college pipeline. And we talked about a cello rondo and what it, what it hoped to achieve. And when I came down off of the stage like this, I met Cassidy. She came right up to me and, and pushed her card into my hand and told me kind of what she described to you, but I didn't really take it all in. And um, I said, yes, yes, but can we talk about it later? And then she called me a couple weeks later. And that's how we started, right? That's exactly right. Um, and with Atlanta Talent Development Program, um, we actually, the first year of this program, which is what this picture is from, uh, did a master class online with the Atlanta Symphony Youth Orchestra. Um, and as you can see, it was in black and white, and we were still figuring out some of the technology things. Um, we, had, we did it in the performance hall at New World, which we later realized actually um, caused a bigger delay than we wanted in the, t in the latency of the video because of the length of fiber going from under the stage up to the top of the stage. Um, so the other room you saw is a smaller room at New World Center that works better technologically. But why we picked Atlanta in the first place was a very practical techn technology reason. Um, the video technology that we're using is called LOLA, which stands for low latency. And I was told by people much smarter than me who set up all of this tech that we needed a city within a certain radius of miles <laughs> for this to work really well. And they said, Atlanta is a big city that's close go talk to the Atlanta Youth Symphony. And so that's how that started. But I then pivoted to working with Atlanta Talent Development um, after meeting Adrian. Is there anything you want to add about that? Uh, yes, so initially it was just um, the town hall, I believe, that you did with Atlanta uh, Youth Symphony. And what it turned into is that now we have um, three sessions on our calendar where talent devo development program students um, have sessions with the New World Symphony Fellows. It also includes a residency where they bring um, four or five fellows down that then do 
a series of events with um, our students, including the Youth Symphony, and then the um, Town Hall in April. So it actually is an extended experience, which allows uh, it, it's more of uh, relationships than something that just happens uh, once. And that was great feedback that our evaluator was able to collect from the students and from the participants, that they, they wanted more of a deeper connection. And we were able to facilitate that. Um, for on New World's behalf, one of the reasons I specifically wanted to work with the talent development program is as we were having more and more conversations about equity, I thought, well, we need to use these resources where it will do the most good right now. Um, and so I certainly made the conscious decision to say, no, I want to focus on talent development programs for this. Um, so if you have a talent development program, please come talk to me <laughs> about how we can work together. Um, and for me at New World, I mean, we're, my main job is to, is to train the fellows. Um, and a product of that is providing all these community engagement programs for them to, to learn and practice skills. Um, but I don't have the resources to make the connections with families or gather the pre-college students that my partners here already have. So I was just trying to find a way to have reliable partners who had already done the work of making those, those relationships of trust with students and family to be my partners so that I wasn't taking on the whole pipeline. I was taking on one very specific part, serving our fellows and serving their students at the same time. So we can go to the, yeah, great, that's great. Uh, what is the technology we use? I talked about Lola a little bit. Um, Lola is really just a, a camera um, and a software on computer. Um, if anybody's interested, I can send you all the technical specs that you need. Um, but we run Lola through what we call Internet 2, which is a consortium. Um, it's a faster internet pipeline. If you are an educational institution or have a partnership with any educational institution, they probably have Internet 2 on their campus. Um, but essentially, it allows us to have lessons, classes in much more real time than using something like Skype. Um, we have done things on Skype, but I will say that quality for both the students and the, the teachers in that scenario is, is vastly improved when we can use Internet 2. Um, but there was another challenge with using Internet 2 in that we were working with professional symphonies, and they didn't have Internet 2. So I was hoping that Adrian could talk a little bit about the partnerships with higher education that have helped us employ this technology. Yes, so we have actually worked with three institutions in Atlanta. We have done it in partnership with uh, Kennesaw State University one year, uh, with Georgia State University one year, and this year we are working with uh, Georgia Tech, Georgia Institute of Technology, and they have been absolutely uh, wonderful, and it's amazing to be in a space where uh, we can see the New World Symphony and hear them. New World Symphony can hear us and can uh, see us, and it's really like you're all in the same room. Walter, do you want to talk about your partnership with Vanderbilt? Yes, Blair? our partnership is with Blair School of Music at Vanderbilt, which is a conservatory attached to university. And Blair is our primary partner in um, delivering our Cello Rondo program. Many of our um, well, all of our students take music theory classes there, and most of them participate in their youth orchestra programs. It's m several components of the program are, are delivered by Blair, and so they were the natural fit for us to approach when, when starting this project. And it, it was, it's been a very interesting and um, a lot of learning along the way because we, though Vanderbilt has internet too, they had never used it at Blair, so we, ha we were actually pioneering the use of that technology at the conservatory for them. So the other logo you see up there is Polycom. That just happens to be the, the camera television software system that we use at New World, but there are other companies that deliver the same kind of video conferencing um, availability through internet too. But again, I have a prospectus, should you want to set up your own system um, on how to get that done with Polycom. Um, but that's the setup that you've been seeing on the pictures with the, the TV screen, and um, basically there's a computer underneath it that is running the connection. So if we can go to the next slide, that'd be great. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what are, what are the benefits to this program. Um, and I would ask Adrian first to talk about um, the benefit for your students and, and for your institution. I think that would be great. So one of the things that we did in the first year is that we actually had pen pals with New World Symphony Fellows. And so it allowed so for instance, our students, we want very much to forecast for them after they leave us what some of the next steps might be. 
And so having um, a relationship with someone who has finished their uh, conservatory training and is now in the pre-professional phase of their career allows them to see, and one of the things that we did because um, we have alumni of the New World Symphony in the Atlanta Symphony, and so the very first thing that we did was to ask them to come and talk to our students about what the New World Symphony is because our students are young and didn't necessarily know what, um, what it was, and so they were able to make a connection in that way, and then they have, they um, coached a, we had a clarinet uh, quartet um, that they coached throughout the whole year, and they participated in a competition at the end of the year, and they won first place. I don't even know if you knew that. I did not know that. Thank <laughs> you for sharing. Um, and so in addition to that, it was very helpful for our seniors, for them, it was kind of like another opportunity to uh, play their repertoire before their auditions in a, and to receive some feedback in a situation that kind of models what happens when they go to do their uh, auditions at the conservatory. Our younger students also had an opportunity to receive feedback, four or five of them would play with each session and it was just absolutely, the thing is, is that any time that our students can have additional performance opportunities and also to have things that oftentimes is reinforcing what the teacher is saying, sometimes it's tweaked and told in a different way, then it just allows them to continue to uh, progress, to continue to learn more about the bigger world of music that they are striving to become a part of. And it has just been something that um, they look forward to. And then they get a chance to see them when they come down in person. It has just been an in-depth experience for our students. Walter? Uh, you know, many of the, there are many benefits and, and many of them are the same for our students uh, as uh, as Adrian just described, I, I think uh, um, one of the big one of the big benefits is that we ha we have a partnership with New World Symphony, which in and of itself is is wonderful and amazing um, to be able to to play ideas and share share um, just as professional colleagues about our programs and how we can work together to make each better. For our students, they have. Um, developing relationship with the fellows as coaches who are perhaps closer in age to them than our, their teachers are. And it may be easier for our students to imagine themselves in the place of somebody who's only less than a decade older than them doing what they want to do than somebody who's two or three decades older than them. Uh, another great benefit of the program is that, uh, well, we work in an industry where um, we are, we are we are way behind almost every other industry in using technology. Almost every, almost every other field um, has replaced paper by the use of uh, iPads and, and computers, and we are still playing from written paper on, uh, for, for the most part. And, and it, it gives our, our students a chance to feel like they're connected to the world that they know, the, the world of technology that they know by using this very exciting new uh, way to connect with people uh, instantaneously. And, and I will say that it is, it is far superior to Skype. You feel like you're in the same room with them when it happens. It really shortens the distance and, and makes our community bigger. Um, the, at our last master class that we had with New World just a few weeks ago, um, one of our students who's new to the program this year, who's a cello student, a young girl, I think she's 12 or 13, was playing for Blake Anthony, who's a fellow who's here at this conference, and he's a fellow at New World Symphony, who went to Blair School of M Music at Vanderbilt, and the accompanist who was playing for for our student Rose also is a former student at B from Blair School of Music, who now has her doctorate from M University of Michigan. But she went back to Blair to teach. She was a classmate of Blake Anthony's at that school, and Rose's teacher 
who is a member of the Nashville Symphony and a member also of the Blair School of Music faculty, Brad Mansell, who's also at this conference, was Blake Anthony's teacher when he was at Vanderbilt. So all these people were brought together through this amazing technology and this partnership. And so th I think the benefits, we don't, there are other benefits we don't even know. We're gonna learn them as we go on. Yeah, and both Adrian and Walter touched on something very important for, for New World that's a benefit, that this is really a long-term recruiting effort. <laughs> I mean, how many middle and high school students know about New World Symphony? Not many. Um, and so for them to know who we are, what we stand for, and have it be a goal that one day they be a New World Symphony fellow, I, I think that's, that's great. It's very important work. Um, for our fellows, this is an opportunity to practice their teaching skills, um, to practice their teaching skills in a medium online that maybe they haven't experienced as a student, or maybe they have, but have never taught that way. Um, and maybe increasingly in the future, more teaching will happen online. So we think it's a great opportunity for them to get to see that. Um, when they travel to Nashville and, and Atlanta, I mean, our fellows are just as excited to interact with those professional symphony members as the students are, I think. <laughs> so um, in some cases, it's also learning to have the confidence to, to share your uh, opinion in front of a master teacher who maybe has either been your teacher or somebody you looked up to for a long time and still know that your opinion is valid and important. Um, so there's been a lot of benefits. Um, I will say that we are also um, looking for uh, new funding for this. As I mentioned, the Rockefeller grant um, ended last year, so this has been our first year without specific funding, but we've um, incorporated it into the annual fund and been able to continue the programming pretty much the, s the same um, without the evaluator, much to my chagrin, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, and we are hoping though that this, because we're using so much technology, this might appeal to um, some non-traditional funders of classical music education, um, perhaps more corporate sponsors or things um, along that lines, but we're, we're, we're open to ideas and suggestions. Um, but that being said, once you have the initial investment of some of the equipment, it's really not that expensive of a program to run. Um, so that's what I want to say about that. Uh, if we could, thank you. Uh, another important element that we uh, learned through the course of our evaluation was that there is no replacing the in-person connection. So it was really important to us to incorporate and expand the budget enough so that we could do at least one in-person residency in our partner cities um, and also that it not be a burden um, in terms of cost to them. So uh, New World has provided all, covered all of the costs associated with our trips to these cities. Um, that doesn't make up for the amount of time that they've spent with us, thank you so much, but uh, in a small way, we hope that it, you know, that alleviates some of that burden. So, Adrian, could you talk a little bit about the in-person vi visits and what those have been like? They have kind of covered the gamut. Um, they will uh, sit in with the Atlanta Symphony Youth Orchestra. They are there to provide um, some tips during that rehearsal and the sections in which they participate. They are there to truly kind of expand upon what the experience is like of pursuing this career and being able to answer questions both of the students and of their uh, parents that helps to kind of explain or foreshadow what is to uh, come. And it's just a chance for them to get a chance to um, see and have a personal experience. They do master classes, they do um, special interest sessions, and again, it has been uh, extremely um, valuable um, and we use it as a tool that is part of our preparation for uh, moving the needle forward for our students. So when we are able to have a New World Symphony Fellow that comes and tells one of our tuba players you need to have more dynamic contrast. It's not that they haven't heard that before. So, but all of a sudden they say, oh, okay. <laughs> I better do something about this because it's time for my auditions. So it's just another voice that helps our students to um, rise to the standard that we are expecting of them. Great, and Walter, from your perspective? I'd, a I'd actually like to defer this question to Kimberly McLemore. Would, 
we talk, talk, tell us a little bit about the in-person visits in Nashville, since you've been really much more closely involved with them. Kimberly is the, the Accelerando manager. She runs, our, runs this program at the Nashville Symphony. Hello. Um, the in-person visits for the fellows um, in Nashville have looked like a couple different things. We've had two in-person visits at this point. And um, sometimes they look like open master classes um, where all of our students take part in um, seeing each other perform and, and the feedback from the fellows. Um, they've attended some classical series concerts with our students and their families, um, which is a really valuable time for them to get to know each other and um, spend some, yes, personal time, but also in, in the hall, in that setting, um, kind of the New World Symphony fellows, I think, were excited to see the two performances that they did, and they were able to then meet with our um, music director, Giancarlo Guerrero, and um, have a talk with him backstage. And so that was a benefit to the fellows, um, but also something that our students then kind of aspire to be a part of um, later in their careers. Um, they also do something really simple, like eat together and just have conversation and allow the students to have an informal time to say, what does your world look like? Um, what can I expect after conservatory or music school? I think, yeah, one of the great things we've been able to do in Nashville especially is have students uh, play for different instrumentalists. So having a flute player in a cello rondo play for one of our viola fellows and starting to learn about getting feedback from instruments that may not be your own. Um, and working on, on really musical things, you know, because I, I think a lot of these students are still hammering it out in the practice room, and it's nice for them to be able to get some feedback on what, what are they doing musically. Um, so that's been great. And then the last question I wanted to cover, and then we'd be happy to uh, take any questions, is um, what is the town hall and, and this NWS Connect uh, program meant to your organization overall? Walter, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, and I talked about this a little bit before, but the, the experience of um, having our students be able to interact directly with Michael Tilson Thomas is, uh, is irreplaceable. And it's something that, that they look forward to all year. And, it, and, and, and most of them, when they come into the program, I, actually I would probably say all of them when they come into the program, do not know who Michael Tilson Thomas is. They live in Nashville, they're, they're high school, junior middle, middle school and high school students. So the process of them realizing um, the opportunity that's been given to them uh, opens their eyes to the, the world that they're um, striving to become a part of, and it's it's it really it really they sit up straighter, they they try harder. It's very inspiring. Thank you, Adrian. And I just wanted to address another um, bonus from this is that when the New World Symphony is interested in the talent development program, when Michael Tilson Thomas is interested in the talent development program, the other thing that we have created is all of a sudden uh, people who may be thinking of this program that is over here someplace in the corner, all of a sudden other people, it provides more respect even within the organization because the other people in the Atlanta Symphony is thinking, New World Symphony, Michael Tilson Thomas, they're interested um, you know, in our students, and so therefore they are more likely to say, oh, well, let me check out. They must be doing something. <laughs> um, or else we would not have been able to um, you know, forge these kinds of uh, relationships. So it's really kind of the bigger part of, so for instance, we send our kids to camp in the summer because we want them to have more of a realistic expectation of what the competition is out there. And so as other people have become interested in our program, then it has made others think, oh, they are doing something important. And so it gives you um, more stature or leverage in going to uh, garner other uh, supports and resources within your organization. Thank you. Um, one of the reasons I picked the photo that's on this last slide of MTT smiling is that there were so many photos of him smiling from the last town hall. Um, and that's, that's really a lovely thing to see. 
Um, he's having a great time, and the students are having a great time, and the 60 or so people who are sitting in that room, um, and then the 100 students in the Atlanta Symphony Youth Orchestra and the Acella Rondo family watching in Nashville, we were all together having a really great time. Um, and that, to me, felt like a, a big moment. Um, it was a time to say, we're, we're all here together. We're all invested in making this wonderful music together. Um, for the fellows, I know they've taken a great sense of pride in the accomplishments of their, their uh, students that they get to know in Atlanta and Nashville. Um, they also have gained confidence, as I said, in their own teaching abilities. Um, and I, th it, I was really surprised, actually. MTT got kind of sentimental um, talking about the town ha hall recently and about how much hope it was giving him that classical music was going to be continuing with such passionate young people. Um, and I think it's, it was a good reminder for me that even sometimes MTT doesn't know what's going to happen <laughs> to the future of classical music and worries about it. Um, and so he, he was said that he was just filled with hope. And for him, that was, that was pretty touchy-feely. But it was really nice to hear. Um, so that's our presentation, basically. But we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. I'd like to say just one more thing. So even though even the relationship that is built annually during the year, the same fellows touch our students over multiple years. So it's something that happens very much longitudinally. Absolutely, please. Hi, my name is Eric Williamson. I'm director of outreach for the Brooklyn Youth Chorus, and we're looking into exploring more um, solo artist development um, programming for our students. So I have a question about um, your budget. I know you mentioned that a lot of the grants covers a lot of the expenses, or one organization pays for the expenses for the other. Um, so my question is, outside of um, technology expenses, what is your biggest priority in terms of, or biggest expense in terms of um, how the money is used, um, and, and what is that item in the budget that is the most expensive? Great, so the most expensive, aside from the technology startup costs, is the in-person visits. So that's plane tickets, that's hotels, that's per diem for our musicians, um, paying for any concert tickets that we need to, paying for any activities we want to do with the students. Um, but it's, it's not, I mean, it's like $10,000. It's not an obscene amount of money. Um, so that would be for, like, especially this year where I didn't have that grant this year, that was something that I really wanted to maintain, and I, I kept that budget line specifically for that. Um, for a professional organization, of course, you're also going to have to consider um, paying for the instructors. Um, as a fellow at New World Symphony, this is part of their community engagement uh, experience, so I'm not paying them separately to do this work, but that is something to consider if you're in a professional organization. Thank you. Hello. I was very excited to see this panel because I'm from Atlanta. I attended Blair. My first job was at the Nashville Symphony. And as a conductor, Michael Tilson Thomas has been a hero of mine for a long time. So um, all of your institutions are very dear to my heart. But I would like to, um, oh, and I'm coming from Baltimore. I work for Orchids now. Um, we work in some schools that, you know, you touched on the technology disparity um, between other industries. Even within our own industry, where access of resources are, is is greatly uh, it, it's the disparity is large, as we know. Um, and so we're working in some schools where there is not a PowerPoint projector in the whole school, where the water cannot be um, cannot be drunk. Um, so I would like to I would ask if you guys have reached out to other schools. Um, other high schools where resources are really lacking, if there's an opportunity there to um, really invest in the infrastructure of schools where the resources are greatly needed. And um, like if you guys have done that uh, at all or if you would consider doing that. That's a great question. Uh, I, mean, ahead, I, can, I, can, I can say um, initially we have, you know, our program is for um, very accomplished musician, young musicians. and. Um, and almost all of them go to public schools. And so through our program, they have access to this technology, uh, but for the specific program only. Um, we have not pursued um, trying to help schools in integrate this technology. I think, um, I think the day will come when, when that will be expected the way that some schools have smart boards in every classroom and, and projectors and all of that. Um, but, I, but I think um, it's a part of the much larger question about um, 
the allocation of public school education funding for music education in general. Um, I, I think that that's almost a, more, a bigger priority than the technology. We have uh, partnerships with Miami-Dade Public Schools in New World, um, and Miami-Dade Public Schools is the fourth largest school district in the country, um, and we have resource problems, just as, as you identified. Um, we actually did work with Internet2 Consortium to try to connect some schools in Miami. Um, they have connections. They're not using them. Um, and as a department of two people at New World, we couldn't facilitate being in both ends of that to make it work. Um, I also got some feedback from our musicians that in terms of local students, they, they wanted to go there. They wanted to be there in person and that they didn't see why, why would we use technology in our city even if it saves us an hour of, of driving. They still wanted to make that effort. So, um, But it's a great question. It's one that comes up a lot. Um, Internet 2 is investing a lot of money in hooking up K through 12 schools. So if you if you have a school that you really want to get online, um, they're very interested in that. But just know that there's going to be training for somebody at that school to maintain it and use it, and probably on your end too, that you might have to facilitate some of that. So it's a question of how are we investing our resources. Hi, uh, I'm Tevin from the Wolf Trap Foundation. Uh, Cassidy, could you describe um, the audition and selection process for New World Symphony and how that um, influences your strategies for partnerships um, in places such as Atlanta and Nashville, uh, if it does? Sure, that's a great question. Um, very New World-centric. So uh, New World Symphony, uh, we accept online applications um, from graduates of, you have to have at least an undergraduate degree uh, to apply to New World Symphony. Um, you do an online application. There's a pre-screening round video um, from that pre-screen. A certain number of uh, participants are invited to a live audition in um, a city in the US um, and our dean for admissions and a panel of alumni do the tour um, and make the fellow invitations uh, from those auditions. Um, also to say that we have rolling enrollment, if you will, in that we have 87 fellows because that's how many people are in the orchestra, roughly. So if there's a violin opening, there's a violin opening. If it's an instrument like tuba, even if you have a great audition, you still might have to wait until that position becomes available to be invited as a fellow. Um, we also have a very active sub list because our fellows are encouraged and are often away taking professional symphony and other auditions. Um, so a number of the, uh, the qualified candidate candidates who are, there isn't a spot for a full-time fellowship yet are invited to substitute with us throughout the year. Um, so that's kind of the model. There is also a essay portion where um, the applicants are required to talk about how they see music in our current world and what community engagement activities they've participated in or would like to. Um, I will say, as of now, I don't have a lot of influence in terms of the admissions process, uh, so I kind of assess from the admitted fellows or fellows who are um, new to New World and see where uh, their interests lie. So, I'm sorry, this is getting very New World heavy, but as part of our community engagement curriculum, the fellows have a, have a choice between four major areas um, of what community engagement programs they want to participate in for the year. Um, and NWS Connect is one of those areas. So a specific group of fellows for one given se season will focus on this as their main um, contributions in community engagement. And then there are a group that do lessons in classrooms. There's a group that does more traditional um, interactive presentations. Um, and then there's a group that works on our education concert and larger format kind of audience engagement projects. So those are the, those are the ways that I have divvied up the work, if you will, of the community engagement programs of the New World Symphony. So we have a couple questions on Slido. Um, I, one that I think we didn't talk about a lot, but what are some of the biggest challenges in this work? One of you want to ta tackle that? Um, we, we honestly, um, because we work at a symphony orchestra that had no project like this before, um, the, the, the task of actually figuring out how to do it technically took a lot of persistence we had to, we had to have a lot of conversations re with people repeatedly over a long pe it seemed like a long period of time several months before it actually came together because it meant um, convincing our partner at Blair to convince their, their you know Blair is sort of like a conservatory but within a university which means they're, they're one branch of the university and a whole other branch of the university was the ones that had internet too. They had to run it to Blair, I think, or so. I mean, it was a it was a pretty involved process. We were causing problems, according to, to Blair. Get it, just to get it set up, that was probably the biggest challenge. 
And, and I would say the other, the other big challenge is that our students are most, especially the ones that participate in this, are high school students. So they're very, very busy. If you know, if you know any high school students who are good students, then you know that they're very busy. And, and our program on top of, on top of their schoolwork requires them to do about three other things every week on top of all of that, sometimes more. And so this program was a commitment and we had to make a conscious decision that this was gonna be a vital component of what it meant to be a part of a cello rondo and, and say no to other things that they might do in order to do this. So it, it was also, I think it, it was a process for us to realize how to work that into our curriculum. There were no challenges, only opportunities. <laughs> and this is why it's great to work with Adrian. So um, what we did is in our calendar, we have built in uh, six family education days, um, six months where the students come together for a topic related to whatever it is that we feel like our student population needs. And so what we did was to dedicate three of those days for this project, and so the only extra date that we added to our um, calendar was the uh, town hall. And so it kind of fit in seamlessly with what we were already doing, and so it was just a matter of that Adrian sent out the email early enough to make sure that I, you know, basically I send out an email, who wants to play, and then they write back and say, I want to play, but I've got to make sure I send it early enough so that I can tell Cassidy so that she can so I can find the, the fellows. To come. And so that was. Um, we, we figured it out eventually. Yeah. yeah. Scheduling. Mm -hmm. Scheduling is a challenge. Um, I will say early on the first year, especially, there was a lot of fear on the fellow side of, of using the internet to, to teach. They didn't know what to expect. and. That, that led to fear, um, that has really changed. Um, and I credit the fellows who have gone through the experience in just word of mouth telling their colleagues that it's a worthwhile experience and the technology actually does work really well. Um, so that for me has been a great um, learning. And, and one of the things we actually said in, as an obje objective in our first evaluation was to um, make the fellows more comfortable with this work. And I would say we have definitely achieved that. Um, so that was really exciting to see. And one thing that was really great about the fellows is that they showed great respect for our students and they approached this at a very high level. So at no point during this process did I feel like they felt like they were working with uh, little children. The comments that they gave were um, specifically geared to you can do more and they were not afraid to ask our students to do certain things and they were not afraid to ask them to repeat whatever it is their request was until they actually had uh, a difference. So there was nothing, um, if you use in quotation um, the terminology, there was nothing dumbed down for our students because they're, they are young. There are a couple questions along a similar line um, is on Slido, which is what, are, what is the music level that we're talking about in terms of these middle and high school students? Um, and our students in our programs, have they already had musical education before they are identified? Um, I mean, for New World, again, I talked about this a little bit at the beginning, but I wanted to apply our resources where I felt like we could make the most change in the shortest amount of time. And most of our fellows are not early education teachers. A few people are, but not, not all of them. Um, and I felt like middle and high school is a level where you can accomplish a lot with a student, even if you're not the best pedagogue. Um, and so for me, that was, that was a tactical decision. Um, for these two, I don't know if you want to talk about your recruitment and student level. Yeah. Um, we have 16 students right now, from, and they're in grades 4 through 12. Um, and they're, when they're accepted into the program, they sign they and their family sign a, a contract that they intend to go to college to major in music, even the fourth grader. It's part of being in the program so that they all understand 
why they're being asked to do all the things they're being asked to do. And when we accept students into the program, it's based on, it's a gamble, it's based on potential. And uh, I, we look for three things. We look for uh, innate talent, um, motivation, and the support of the family. And, and we ask that if, if somewhere along the path they decide this is not what I want to do, this, I want to do something else, that they would le drop out of the program so that to make room for somebody else to join. So um, where they are in the program is based upon uh, their individual teachers, uh, as far as like ability level or accomplishment level, is based on their indiv individual teachers um, gauging what steps they would need to get in order to prepare a college audition that will win them a place in music school. And so for the fourth grader, um, it's going to be a lot different than it will be for the Alia, who you saw on the screen, is right now doing all her college auditions. But um, I would say, I mean, many of our students are preparing uh, ex the same excerpts that, that many people in this audience have played at auditions. And, and that's the level that we're, we're striving to prepare them to be able to do. For our program, um, they do not commit to majoring in music until their junior year in high school. And what they do is that they commit to meeting the program requirements. That's what they sign for us every year. And of course, the program requirements are what leads them to be able to do these high-level auditions when they are um, seniors. But I don't, well, maybe I do tell them. But, um, but uh, what I am looking for when we are recruiting for our program is a student that likes to practice and one that will practice without somebody making them. So as long as they like to practice, then it doesn't matter where they are when we get them, um, you know, whether they've had lessons or not had lessons, uh, that kind of thing. If they are intrinsically motivated and passionate about music, then our goal is to get them there, and we do whatever it takes in order to make that happen. So I'm, I'm getting the hard wrap it up sign, but Phil, I'm happy to answer your question <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> so sorry, we have to, have to make room for the next presentation. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, you are such a fantastic audience. We really appreciate it.